Welcome back everyone to Finnegan's Farm and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today is a Sunday special. We have Owen Hannon here from Mead Farm Machinery and we're going to talk through our two 175s. One that we bought this year and one that we bought last year. So they're similar but they do have the differences so we'll let Owen talk through that. He knows a lot more than we We have do. your two 175 R's here. A uh, little bit smaller compared to what we had the last time yeah. with the ARX. Um, but two very similar tractors but have their main differences. Uh, both are Command Pro. Uh, this one is obviously fit with loader brackets and it's all plumbed into the electric joystick where this one is our full ultimate edition on the right hand side. We can't get a higher spec tractor from Deere that's all singing, all dancing. Um, main differences I suppose between the two of them is this has the full lighting package the same as the right hand one but this is on just solely halogen lights where the right hand one is on LED lights. Both tractors have premium front linkage and front PTO. Um, both PTOs are rated at nearly three and a half ton. Uh, they have upper and lower limit sets uh, for setting mowers and things like that. Standard thousand speed front PTO and both have the same front suspension system. Um, this is our premium series R loader 663R. Um, it's all electric function in off the e joystick inside in the cab. So when you actually drop off your loader then you just change over your functions and you can operate your front linkage or you can configure your joystick to use uh, other functions in the tractor. A um, few handy things that's on a deer some people don't know. That's a, grand, a handy port for jump starting off tractors and stuff. You don't have to start looking for batteries that are in beside the step here. Just plug on there, put on your earth um, and you walk away. Um, 50k axle at the front, both tractors are 50k, uh, they have internal front planetary brakes as standard and they have air brakes. Um, you can see on the roof we have our 6000 receiver for our precision ag system. Um, John Deere is number one worldwide for all precision ag applications. Both these tractors have ultimate unlocks uh, which allows the tractors to do uh, machine sync. So if you had this tractor in the field with a combine or a forage harvester, uh, the tractor would be able to come in underneath the combine and the combine will actually physically take control of this tractor. The operator sits back and you can steer the tractor, speed it up, slow it down. Both tractors can share guidance lines in the field. So if both tractors went out mowing and this tractor started, it doesn't split up the field. Next tractor comes in, it can pick up this guidance line that the tractor had used and the second one just follows in as standard. They also have tractor turn automation as standard. They'll turn themselves at the headland and they'll come back in the most suitable pass that they find is safe and easy to turn with. You don't need any other third party system or anything with this. It's all built in house from Deere. The receiver is in house, the screens, the software. Um, and it allows things to be a little bit more streamlined and you're not having to mix and match with third party systems what a lot of other manufacturers have to do because they're not able to um, provide their own in-house built system as we call it to make it simple. This tractor is on 650s, 42s, standard enough configuration for this size of a tractor mainly because we want to keep hitch height up for straw balers, round balers and big square balers. 38 inch rim, some people still like them but they kind of work a little bit better in our smaller range. Uh, front tires is sitting on 665 R28. That's our biggest tire we can put on that configuration. Good job for this size of a tractor because it is in our larger frame and it's just to balance the weight that bit better. Um, you come round to the back of the tractor. This tractor has four electric SCV valves, the high flow 450 valves. Um, one thing to know about a, a John Deere, this tractor has 155 litre pump in it and it actually, if you put a flow gauge on the back of them spools, it's actually putting out over 160 litres of flow out through the spool. Some manufacturers are advertising these massive big hydraulic pumps, but if you actually put a flow gauge on the back of the spool, you're not getting anywhere near to what you get on the brochure. So it's just one thing to bear in mind from John Deere, what's on the paper, the flow is actually better than what's actually written down. Um, we have hydro pneumatic cab suspension, it's in the aura since the start. Uh, you can actually change the sensitivity of the cab suspension inside the screen. You have three options. Some people want a more wobbly cab. Uh, the heavier lads want stiffer cabs. You can kind of mix and match it whatever way you want. Um, air brakes are standard. Isobus, 
fairly straightforward. It's the back end of a tractor. Uh, people are always wondering what this is. Um, that's our large diesel tank, so brings the capacity up to over 400 litres. Um, people are always asking the question, does that never get caught in it or does, does it ever get broken? No, we never seem to have an issue. Um, heavy duty stabilisers on the back. They're standard across our range on the large frame. You have an option of putting actually a hydraulic ram there. there um, you can see a cup. <laughs> there's a tea bag there. I see. <laughs> Alan Clark's cup of tea at 10 o'clock one day. I'm waiting to find the old pot of milk somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> having more. You have your hydraulic controls here, standard for a hydraulic top link, handy mm. for putting on implements, PTO, lift. Yeah, so if you want that to work, you have to put it in spool number three. Yeah, so it's all oh. colour coded. If you look over at the spools, they're all colour coded on the back. They're colour coded to correspond inside. And you have to under your brown spool here on the back, which this one is in, and then you can operate it once the tractor is running. This is the ultimate top spec tractor that you can get from Deere. A lot of similarities to the one we've just gone through, but this one is sitting on big boots. It's on an 800 tyre on the back, and it's on a Riedestein tyre. Um, my favourite tyre at the minute, real good hard wearing tyre, and very, very good to keep itself clean because of the curved cleats. Mm. Um, your 800 tyre on the back, this tractor is obviously going to go what, sewing or slow ground. He, yeah, his idea He has some there. idea yeah, there yeah, for yeah. it. Um, while I'm actually on the point, I have to actually make a note to Paul that it's not the C Command Pro arm, it's the Command Pro joystick. Don't be mixing up what Paul tells you because he keeps repeating himself and it's not right. <laughs> um, this full tractor has LEDs, same light package as that, just full LEDs. Uh, we don't have the stainless steel exhaust. People are wondering about these boards that they be on the back. Um, we have to, by law, put on these boards to get the tractor released from the factory when you put wider than a 650 tyre on it. Oh, right. So anything up from a 650, 710, 800 up to this, you see the width of that tyre. <laughs> yeah, because I was actually driving it. If you've seen yesterday's video on the dung, I was driving it and I keep going down the tight roads and like you're know, like you are that bit wider yeah. like you have to watch yeah, like yeah, small yeah. you more. feel like you're sitting on the big boots yeah then. yeah yeah <laughs> and you see cyclists coming up to you and you see this big <laughs> back end of this tractor coming for you um so yeah back end configuration of the disc is the same only this one obviously has its load sense lines built in for running grimy planters or that requires load sense fusion balers that sort of thing um Big diesel tank. Yeah, it has our ult it has our ultimate mirrors. They're heated, they're telescopic, and electrically controlled. Yeah. I'll just go into the cab and I'll show you the setup functions that can be used on a Command Pro joystick. Both tractors are set up the same. They both have a 4600 display. They both have our ultimate activations, like I talked about earlier. Um, this is our new Command Pro joystick that was launched a couple of years ago. Um, it has. Numerous double throw toggle switches, there's orange uh, configurating buttons and then there's single buttons so we have 10, 11 and 12 and they're action buttons which can actually be configured to use for four wheel drive, auto track engagement, uh, auto diff lock, any of the double throw switches can be used to control rear or front hitches or any of the SEV valves. I meant to mention on the back, uh, both these tractors have four SEV valves in the back, you can get up to six if you wish and then you can have uh, front mounted mid mount valves that operate your front linkage and your loader so when I actually put my hand across that everything is sitting all close to my fingers and all single actions you can save these configurable buttons to whatever sequence you wish so if I get in and let's say I have a wagon on the back I can go in and change my function and configure this whole joystick to what I want it set up for a certain implement. I can hit save and load, put in my name, put in the implement and I can leave. Cottle then can jump on that evening and he might want it a different way and he can go back in, click load and he'll have Cottle's name and the wagon and then all the functions will be programmed back to the way Cottle had it. So you can have multiple different drivers but also save your configurations to whatever way that needs so to be. So the tractor has a creep function built in. So let's say we're putting a weight block on the front. You have a safety switch button on the back that you must press. If you bring the joystick over to the side and you push it forward, the tractor starts to creep. The minute I let go of that joystick, the tractor will actually stop dead in its position. As opposed to, if we start driving on the joystick, and I set a forward speed by just driving it normally, it just sits at that speed until I tap the brake. So that's the difference. When you bring it to the side, you have that creep function for just putting on a weight block or backing into an implement. You can go in reverse as well. It's up to 2K. The minute you let go of it, then it'll just stop. Um, 
We also have we also have an engagement of a side cruise speed. Uh, so I have this actually set here at 7.4. You see we're just in reverse here. If I tap the joystick to the left, it'll change direction. And we have number one light engaged. If I tap it to the left, it'll go up to that 7.4. It'll sit there, the highlights on the dash, and we just tap the brake and it just overrides it. Um, you also have a cool orange light here, which is about the acceleration. So to make it simple, the more lights you have, the more aggressive the tractor accelerates. So if you're coming out on a busy road, you have a big load, put your three lights on, you'll get maximum torque on the tractor. If you do the same thing on the next load and you, you just have one light on, you'll see that the tractor is much more steadier for taking off. So it's kind of altering how aggressive the acceleration is in the tractor, depending on what way the operator um, wants it. So there's a lot of cool features built into it. Also we have a detent button on the front, I won't just press it now, I'll just leave my foot on the brake. If we actually pull out on the road and we have our scroll up to 50k, the minute we turn out on the road, if we actually push the joystick, it's going to show up an error now because I'm not just not moving. If we detent it forward, the tractor will fully accelerate up to our predefined speed which was set at 50k. So it's handy instead of having to sit on the accelerator all the time. And then if you're stationary, you know you said you're moving, going around, then you push forward, but if you're stationary, you have to press that button on the back. You always have to have that safety button. You'll see there now, the tractor will not try and drive until I press yeah, that. Yes, so you can see that. You, you, you see the error that will always come up in the dash for safety, but the minute I press the safety button on the back, the tractor will start to move and it'll just sit at that set speed. For me to go faster, I just keep pulling the joystick back, I can hold it and it'll race up. I mean yes. I let go of it then, it'll sit in it. If I start to push it forward then, opposite the direction of travel, it'll just gradually slow itself down. We also have um, electrically activated park lock. Uh, one of the only manufacturers that can actually do it. When I get off the seat, regardless what direction the tractor is sitting on, the park lock will automatically illuminate. When I get back into the tractor, we can see that the park lock is, is on. If I press the safety button and start to drive, it sees that I'm sitting in the seat and it disengages. So it's there's a lot of handy, cool, different functions on yeah. it to use. You know, and a lot of people just don't know the full usability of it. Um, also, we have our standard e-joystick, which is there on all our other tractors. You can get that even on an auto quad. Um, for a lower spec tractor, just our power shift tractors, and you can same again. You have action buttons on the top five, six, seven, and eight, which is very similar to what we have 10, 11, and 12. You can activate them for using the same again your four wheel drive. You can set it up for your diff lock. Um, we go through the exact same page again of where we go to configure our Command Pro joystick, and all we do is we just tap down on displays our joystick, and we can see here that we have the front linkage set up on the toggle and we have spool number two here set up on the left and right. I just want to show you a little cloud that's up here on the top of the screen with two arrows that's going up and down. What that is, is that is wireless data transfer. So when you go in and do a job with this tractor, when you close the field work, which I'll show you later on, every minute to minute and a half, this modem that's built into the tractor is wirelessly sending all the information back to the main laptop so you and Paul can sit down and say right what did Owen sow today or what did he mow today mm. there's no plug in it, you, you can if you want plug in a memory stick if you want to do it the old fashioned way but these are constantly sell, sending data at the minute you close the job that's the beauty of the precision ag from Deere because it's all built in, it's in house, you don't have to start paying for more subscriptions and everything. When you buy an R-Series with the ultimate activations, everything is for free. You get an app on the phone and you can monitor all your tractors. One, two, three and four. These are your headland sequences that you'd set up. So if you're using a one pass, we can program into number one function that your forward press a lift and then after a couple of meters, then your one pass a lift and off your PTO. Yeah. It, this tractor, because it's an ultimate, can turn itself at the headland, come back in, we can press number two and it can just reverse the cycle. Another cool feature that the uh, Command Pro tractors can do is it's actually a trailer stretch mode. So when you're actually going down the hill, say with a full load of spuds on the back, 20 or 25 ton, you can actually push your Command Pro joystick forward and you can apply the brake pedal at the same time. And what it'll actually do is it'll actually put a pull at the drawbar point at the hitch. The tractor will try and accelerate, but you're actually applying brake and force to the trailer, and there's no fear that the trailer would ever bully you down the road, and it just leaves the tractor much more stable. Also, when you're going down a hill, 
people are afraid sometimes to pull the joystick back. You can de-accelerate on a Command Pro joystick as well by just pulling it straight back. The engine RPM will go up, the transmission will protect itself, and if, if the tractor feels the trailer pushing it at the drawbar uh, and it's about to jackknife, it will actually accelerate a little bit harder to maintain that dead straight position between the tractor and trailer. So there are two kind of cool features. You have trailer stretch mode and you also have anti-jackknife on the de-acceleration and the joystick coming down. Just another thing about tyres. Um, we're seeing more and more customers looking for high flexion tyres and low ground pressure tyres. Before people were just saying to me, oh Sharon, if they're big and round and they hold air, should they do? But there's so many different manufacturers now that people need to be considering kind of high flexion tyres, minimal ground pressure and just kind of pay a little bit more attention to it and we're seeing more and more of the bigger tyres and um, the bigger tyre configurations coming in that people are just more conscious of ground pressure and that. So. So this is our JD Link platform that a customer can see on a desktop. Uh, we can see here a little blue dot where me and Cottle are and there's the tractor. And the tractor is there parked outside the window. So this JD Link app will show all alerts. If there's an issue with the tractor, we see an alert there for a low tank yesterday. We can see terminals, machine on. We can set up a maintenance schedule, create a plan that will give you alert that the tractor needs a service and then general information about when the tractor worked in the last couple of days. We can also bring it up on the app on the phone. Um, so you can actually use it on your, going around the yard or if you're working, you don't necessarily have to have it on the desktop. It's just an app version that John Deere have launched. I can go in here and click this button called RDA. It's remote display access. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually physically connect to the screen out in the, in the tractor and Cottle's going to run out and he's going to grant me access. So now I'm waiting for a response from the tractor. So Cottle has gone out and granted access to the screen and you can see now the full 4600 command display and Cottle can see what I can see. I can't change anything on this but I can talk to Cottle on the phone. So we can see here now Paul is out in the tractor and he's going to be changing uh, a page or changing a function and that's going to correspond then on the desktop. If he's able to. <laughs> <laughs> he's not getting confused with technology the technology just isn't his game. So you can see here now he's after clicking the menu button and now he's after bringing up and he's after going trailer brake controls. I'm not changing that in here on the desktop. Paul is up there now, happy out, changing his few functions on his tractor. And I can see everything that he's doing here from my desktop. And I can set up and support him remotely without having to waste time on the road and keep him moving in the field. So really good if you have a, a new customer setting up maybe a one pass or kind of a more complicated implement, I can just sit here at the desktop, make a phone call and we can chat through a couple of things or also if you have a customer that something flashes up on the screen, they're a bit worried about it, they just pick up the phone, give me a ring and uh, I can check it remotely through the desktop or through the phone. Another good so. use on the JD Link side is field analysis. So this is just an example of that tractor that's outside the door that done a job um, couple of weeks back where it was actually grubbing and we can see all the different colour streams that's through the map and over here on the left hand side we just have an example of speed and we can see the percentage difference and what speed he was actually working at in the field and then that corresponds to the map. first it looks complicated. Yeah, oh yeah, people are petrified when they yeah, get into you these see, like, you, you know, but... the Command Pro, you're like, what? And you then, know, when we sell the Command Pros we just give them to the customers, just say to them, play around with it, see what you think. Then we go out a couple of days after then and we just answer the few bits that they're not too sure. Thanks lads for having me back again. I hope you get on well now with the 2175 hours. And if anyone has any questions or anything about the Precision Ag side or even the John Deere tractors, don't be afraid to give us a call. So, on my side of things, I'd just like to thank Owen Hannon for coming out, doing the demonstration. I learned a lot today, I hope you did too. Um, and yeah, so don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. And yeah, stay tuned for next week.